Hello everyone, welcome back to the online practical session of first PUC. In today's session, we will be dealing with the third experiment that is the verifications of Kirchhoff's voltage law. We have already studied about the Kirchhoff's law that is KCL and KVL, Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law. So, in today's experiment, uh, we will be analyzing how this Kirchhoff's voltage law uh, will be experimentally done. So, for that we are going to use uh, this circuit diagram where this is the RPS that is the regulated power supply, DC regulated power supply, this is plus and this is minus. Why I have written uh, arrow mark across these power supply because I will be varying the voltage of RPS. For this experiment we will be using two resistors each having a resistance of 100 ohms and they will be connected in series. So, uh, the voltage across these resistors will be measured and the voltage across these resistors will be named as V1 and V2. For that, we will be using voltmeter that is a DC voltmeter each having a range of 0 to 20 volts. So, this is the positive terminal of V1, this is negative terminal of V1. Again, this is positive, this is negative. So, V1 is one voltmeter and V2 is another voltmeter. So, how to do this experiment in the sense, we are going to vary the voltage of RPS in steps of 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10. Accordingly, we are going to measure the output and uh, output voltages that is uh, across V1 and V2, that is across the voltmeters V1 and V2. And at the final uh, column, we are going to calculate the output voltage. So, uh, for this experiment, we need RPS two voltmeters and two resistor which is having a resistance value of 100 ohms. So, let us begin with the connection of this experiment. These are the components what we are going to use for this experiment. This is a RPS that is regulated power supply, DC regulated power supply through which we will be varying the voltage uh, in steps of 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10. And these are the two voltmeters what we are going to connect across the two resistors. Let me consider this as V1 and this as V2. And the two resistor uh, each having 100 ohm is already connected over here. This is one resistor and this is another resistor. Let me consider this resistor as uh, R1 and this as R2. Since each are having the same value, uh, let me consider that this will be connected across V1 and this will be connected across V2. So, let us begin with the circuit connection. For the first connection, we have to begin with positive terminal of the RPS. So, RPS is having two different terminals, this is positive and this is negative. For the positive terminal of the RPS, I have to connect one end of the resistor. So, these are the two ends. So, these are the two ends of one resistor. If I am going to consider this as one end of the resistor, so from the positive terminal of the RPS, I am connecting a wire to one end of the resistor. The other end of the resistor is connected to another end of another 100 kilo ohm resistor. So, I am going to connect a wire uh, for the other end of first resistor and that will be connected to the one end of second resistor. You can connect either in this way or what you can do is you can connect this resistor in this position. Let me do that. This resistor can be connected here. Connection looks simple if you are going to connect like this. Two resistors are connected in series, so the series connections can be done like this directly. So, the two resistors are connected in series. The two resistors are connected in series. By doing a connection in this manner, one of the wire can be saved. So, this will be the easy method. So, let us connect the resistor in this manner and continue with the circuit connection. So, positive terminal of the power supply is connected to upper point of one resistor and uh, these two resistors are already connected. So, let us connect the lower point of the second resistor which will be connected back to negative of the RPS. So, I will be connecting a wire from this point to negative of the RPS. So, I have completed one loop. Now, I have to use uh, voltmeters. So, let me consider this as V1 and this as V2. 
V1 is also having positive and negative terminal, V2 is also having positive and negative terminal. V1 must be connected to the top end of one resistor. So, this is the top end if I am going to keep the diagram like this. So, this is the top end of the resistor positive of uh, V1 is connected to top end of the resistor. Negative of V1, this is negative terminal of V1 that will be connected to middle point of the two resistor that is to a point where two resistors are meeting. So, this is the junction where two resistors are meeting. So, I am connecting that point to negative terminal of the first voltmeter. Now, the second voltmeter is again having two points, one is positive, the other one is negative. The positive again must be connected to the central junction point. So, I am connecting a wire or I am shorting a wire of the positive voltmeter to the center point that is to the junction point. And the negative end of the voltmeter, this is the negative end of the second voltmeter that will be connected to the lower end of the other resistor. So, this is the lower end of the other resistor. So, there I am already having a wire. So, I will be just shorting another wire to the lower end of this resistor. So, the connection is over. So, connection is very very simple, but uh, try to analyze the positive and the negative terminals. And if you are going to uh, connect the resistor in this manner, one of the wire uh, will is not necessary to be used. So, the connections will be very very simple. After doing the connection, switch on the power supply and continue taking the readings. After switching on the main power supply, turn on the power button of the RPS. Now, set the voltage of this RPS to uh, 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10 and take down the readings of V1 and V2. This is V1 and this is V2. So, for the first uh, let me set the voltage of uh, RPS to 2 volts. So, uh, RPS is now set to 2 volts, this is the first rail. So, let us uh, note down the voltmeter readings. V1 is showing me uh, 1.0 and V2 is uh, showing me a reading of 0 0.99. So, this is the first rail. For the second rail, vary the RPS voltage to 4 volts. So, I have set the RPS voltage to 4 volts. Again, note down the readings of V1 and V2. V1 is showing me a reading of 2.01 and uh, V2 is uh, uh, showing a reading of 1.98. For the third rail, uh, set the RPS voltage to 6 volts. So, RPS voltage is now set to 6 volts. After setting the RPS voltage, we have to note down the voltmeter readings V1 and V2. So, this is V1 which is uh, showing me a reading of 2.99 and uh, V2 is uh, 2.95. Similarly, <coughs> vary the RPS voltage to 8 volts, set the RPS voltage to 8 volts and note down the corresponding voltmeter readings. V1 is now showing a reading of 4.00 whereas uh, V2 is 3.94 and for the last rail, uh, vary the RPS voltage to 10 volts. Set the RPS voltage to 10 volts and note down the corresponding readings of uh, voltmeters. V1 is uh, showing 4.95, V2 is 4.89. So, I have taken 5 different rails. After taking the readings, please turn on the coarse and the fine knobs. After uh, bringing back these uh, knobs to 0th position, switch off the power button of this uh, RPS and uh, later switch off the main power uh, buttons that is main power switch. After that you have to remove the connections and uh, then we move on to the tabular column. So, the readings have already been tabulated in the tabular column. V1 is the reading of voltmeter V1 and uh, V2 is the second voltmeter that is uh, this is V1 and this is V2, this is the voltmeter V1 and this is voltmeter V2 and uh, by varying the RPS voltage in steps of 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10, we have noted down the voltmeter readings and now we have to go move on to the last column of this tabular column. Here voltage that is V1 plus V2, you have to uh, find the sum of these two uh, readings that is V1 and V2 and tabulate those readings in the last column. So, for the calculation part, you have to show the calculation for each and every trial. So, for the first trial, applied voltage is equal to V1 plus V2. Uh, 
the according to Kirchhoff's voltage law, whatever the voltage I am applying, that voltage will be dropped across the resistors, that is the IR drops. Since I am using the resistance of equal values, here I am having two resistors and each resistance values are same. So, whatever the voltage we are applying with the help of RPS, that voltage will be equally shared by this resistor. Suppose, I am taking the resistance value of different readings, that is here if I am using 100 ohms and here if I am using 1 kilo ohm, then the uh, voltage drop across these two resistors, that is the voltage whatever I am applying with the help of RPS, that will not be shared equally by these two resistances. So, uh, since I am using uh, the two resistors of same resistance value, the voltages uh, values are almost same. So, for the very first rail, V, that this is the total voltage, V2 is equal to V1 is 1.0 and V2 is 0 0.99. So, here finally, you have to write with the unit, 2 volts will be approximately equal to 1.99. 2 is approximately equal to 1.99 and this reading must be tabulated in the last column of this tabular column. So, this is for the first trial. Similarly, for the second trial, V equals V1 plus V2. Here you have to write with the unit. So, V is equal to V1 plus V2. For the second trial, the uh, total voltage what I am applying is 4 volts is equal to V1 reading is 2.01, V2 reading is 1.98. Accordingly, 4 volts is approximately equal to 3.99 volts. This reading must be tabulated in the tabular column 3.99 volts. Similarly, you have to calculate the total voltage of all these trials and tabulate that reading in the last column. Let me tabulate those readings over here. I have calculated V1 and V2 for each and every trial and those values are already being tabulated in the tabular column. If you compare this first column and the last column, the voltages are almost closer to each other. That is, this is the value or this is the voltage what we are applying with the help of our RPS and this is the total voltage of V1 and V2. There is a small drop in the voltage, there is a small loss in the voltage. But according to the Kirchhoff's law, this voltage and this voltage must match. But in the practically, I mean practically these values are almost closer to each other. So the result is Kirchhoff's law is verified successfully. This is the final result of this experiment. So if you are going to use the resistance values of equal resistance, uh, when you are going to use two resistors, if the resistance values are same, then the total voltage what you are applying with the help of RPS will be divided equally. If you are going to use two resistors of different values, then the voltage will be divided in a different manner. Uh, that is uh, the voltage V1 might be greater than V2 or V2 might be greater than V1 depending upon the resistance value what you are taking. If you are connecting another resistor over here, then whatever the voltage you are applying with the help of RPS, that voltage will be divided across three different resistors. So, according to the Kirchhoff's law, the total voltage will be dropped uh, across the resistors present in that particular loop. This voltage will be equal to the total IR drops in that particular loop. So, from this experiment, we have successfully verified the Kirchhoff's voltage law. In my next experiment, I'll be coming with the. In my next session, I'll be coming with a new experiment that is Kirchhoff's current law. Thank you.